Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan. This is Matt Buzzy. Um, if you're watching us live on Facebook, please ask questions, give comments, ask about anything, see if we know, see if we don't know, see if we're willing to ad lib. Uh, if you're watching us later on YouTube, please like and subscribe, consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. on weekdays, Eastern time, to see our one cool things. And our cool thing today is right here. It is a red suede wow. flat This keyboard. is nothing. No, no, that's, that's, that's an accessory. An yeah. accessory to this lovely suede keyboard. No, not really. It is this. It is, in fact, this. And what is this? Uh, this is the Microsoft Surface Pro, wait for it, with LTE Advanced. Ah. The same one, hardware-wise, the same one you might recognize and know and love uh, from before the external design. Mm -hmm. But for the SIM card slot, has not changed at all. Um, so yes, bringing 4G LTE service to the hardware uh, that people already used and liked. Um, Obviously, you have to buy a whole new unit for that to happen. But uh, yeah, this is this is the this is the deal, which obviously appeals to professionals. So let's do let's do a quick rundown of the capabilities of the Surface Pro before we get into the whole LTE scenario and why people might want that and why people wouldn't want that yeah. and why people aren't just running hotspots off their phones. Sure. So the one we reviewed um, last year was uh, a, a higher skew than this. I'll start by saying that that was like a fully decked out twenty one or twenty two hundred dollar version with an mm -hmm. i seven and all this extra RAM. This one, there's two skews. Um, we have the higher of the two. It's fourteen. 49. Uh, there's 8 gigs of RAM. It's a Core i5, not a Core i7, which, you know, for some, depending on what you want to do, could, could be a, a crucial difference. Um, and there's 256 gigs of SSD memory. The mm -hmm. other version, uh, same i5, but uh, there's 4 gigs of RAM and there's 128 gigs of SSD. And that's only 1100. So that's like base model, but they both felt to you. Does have a memory card slot in it? Uh, no, SD slot? No, SD. no. So, oh, no, no. Wait, no, it's that's not an SD card slot. Okay, it's so a you, Surface Connect port. So you cannot expand that storage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you get the if you get the small amount, that might not be enough for for some people. Two fifty six though for a, for a portable thing is, is pretty good. Three thousand by two thousand screen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, okay. nice and nice and sharp pixel sense as they call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the kind of weird three by two uh, aspect ratio that they have going on. Um, what generation processor? It is not eighth gen. It is seventh gen, ah. um, like the last one. It's mm -hmm. a seventy three hundred U CPU, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, Speedy on our tests, not obviously stacking it up to the, as I said, the last Pro we reviewed was a much, a much higher in SKU. So yeah, mm -hmm. the numbers didn't come in quite as much, but it was also almost $1,000 more. So, duh. And how's the keyboard? Lappable? The keyboard's very lappable, you know? It's a mm -hmm. nice lappable keyboard. Yeah, mm -hmm. the keyboard and pen still sold separately. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of a thing that I think they should just do away with and give you a keyboard. But you don't have to get it in maroon, right? You do not have to get it in maroon. I believe there's a blue and I think a black. Yeah, um, yeah. Are you, are you, is that, was that a comment about the maroon? Was that an indictment of the I, maroon? I, I'm not a big fan of the maroon <laughs> keyboard, I have to say. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, the maroon keyboard is not my favorite thing. Uh, let's take a question. Is the maroon keyboard your favorite thing? <laughs> uh, is it better than the new MacBook Pro? <sighs> what a loaded question. Um, is an orange better than a papaya? Mm, so you true, know, so is, true. Is, 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 is Matt Buzzy's beautiful bald head better than my, you know, number two at the barber every other week? Who can say? You know, who can say? Who can exactly. say? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Um, no, really, I, uh, I, that's kind of a weird, uh, not a weird comparison, they're not that different, uh -huh. but uh, the, the functionality and the, the even the pricing, depending on what models you get, are pretty different. So, better than outright? I don't know, probably not. It, it is a tablet, remember? Yeah. This is just, um, I mean, it's an impressive tablet that acts like a computer. It is, in fact, a tablet. I think, I think the real question here is that if you were running day-to-day -day productivity applications, let's say a suite of a combination of Microsoft Office and creativity applications, mm -hmm. would you want to go with um, would you want to go with a more traditional laptop like the uh, MacBook or, for that matter, a Dell XPS? Right. Or do or is there an advantage to getting this sort of convertible tablet form factor? Yeah, I think if you're on the road a lot, especially as we'll get to with the 4G LTE, uh, this might be a more convenient thing. It's smaller, it's compact, it folds up, it has a kickstand. Uh, the nice, the newer surface, the original Surface kickstands were. Okay but they had a mm -hmm. couple points that uh, you could adjust to and that was it. These are fully, you know, you have every degree, every angle in there between uh, fully flat and fully upright mm -hmm. to choose from. Um, that's really helpful if you're on an uncomfortable train or plane or whatever have you, you can, you can make mm -hmm. it fit uh, how you need. So um, it kind of depends what you're doing. Um, Again, you can get a stylus and a touchscreen. MacBooks, no touchscreen. If that's something that helps you on the plane again, yep. on the train, um, tap away. That's another advantage. So. And uh, and I just realized why my metaphors didn't work because oh, no. an orange is definitely better than a papaya. A papaya Oof. is a trash fruit. Tastes like socks. Next Whoa. question. 
Is it Gorilla Glass? Uh, I believe so, yes. Um, that is their kind of standard, and that was unchanged. Since everything else was okay. unchanged, that was unchanged as Okay, well. so, so, oh, another question. Can you just recap how much the accessories cost? Um, I don't believe, uh, yeah, so let me, ooh, oh, blank in. I think 130 for the keyboard, if that mm -hmm. sounds right, and then and 90, or 99, or 100. We don't have the pen here, for the surface this pen. is the pen. Yeah, the, the pen, pen attaches yeah. to the yeah. side. I think it's 100 for the pen. Um, so, you okay. know, they're not cheap additions, which is why I feel like there's almost, not the pen so much, but the keyboard's kind of essential to the whole bit. I feel like you should, I feel like you should give it. So give let's, it. okay, so let's talk about the LTE, the LTE version, which is what we have here. And the number one question that I always get, because I am actually the wireless guy. Um, the, the, see, no wires, no wires. No, wires. no strings. No strings on I him. No strings. No yeah. Strings on okay, him. so the, uh, the number one question you get is, my phone has a hotspot mode. Right. Why don't I just run the hotspot mode on my phone? Yeah, because then you're on a phone. Yeah, and on a tablet, yeah. uh, on a tablet with a full-size keyboard and a big nice. Screen. No, no, no. But why? Why don't I just run the hotspot? Oh, and, and attach to it. And, and attach, attach to it, to it using you're saying, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could. Uh, I don't know if you've tested hotspot phone speeds. Are they are they any good? Do they do the job? Will this? Why will the Wi-Fi speeds on your hotspot on your phone be? Be any good? So, so there, there, there are two things that happen. There are mm -hmm. two reasons you might not want to use the hotspot mode on your phone. Okay, and actually, there's three reasons you might not want to use the hotspot mode on your phone. Whoa! I just thought of a third one. Whoa! Uh, reason number one is it norks the battery on your phone. Yeah, there's that. And if you're a road warrior, especially if you are concerned about, you know, you're concerned about the battery on your phone, um, using hotspot mode is. Uh, actively is kind of one of the most battery draining things you can do. For sure. So it's nice, but it isn't nice if you are planning to use it all day. Right, you were dedicating that time in transit to use this device right, and right. run its battery down. Your phone is needed once you get off the plane or train as right. well. Reason number yeah. two is, um, re reason number two is that uh, you, in a crowded Wi-Fi scenario, the hotspot mode on your phone will typically have a uh, performance degradation because of Wi-Fi channel congestion. Sure. Whereas a direct LTE connection will straight get- Straight to the moon. Right, straight, works, to right? Moon. straight to the straight moon. Straight to the moon, exactly. And so you'll see really good speeds on your phone and you'll see really good speeds on this, but you might not see good speeds on this linking to Ooh, a hotspot because of the LTE channel congestion in a place like this lab. Sure. Or another crowded urban area. What was your secret mystery third reason? Sasha? The secret mystery third reason involves the, uh, involves the weird service plan available mm. for this thing. Because, so you're, you're, you may not have a service plan for your phone that includes hotspot mode, or you may have, and, and this, is something that, this is something that a lot of our readers sometimes don't get, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and this is, this is actually why we still run reviews of dedicated hotspots. Um, for a lot of people, a lot of people pay privately as a human being for their phones. Yes. But their business is willing to pay for another form of connectivity that is not their personal phone and is not a whole phone bill. So for instance, as a business traveler, um, our business policy would be that uh, our business, if Davis, will not pay for part of my phone bill, but they will pay for a separate day pass on a business connected laptop. Mm. And so that is a reason that you would want an LTE laptop, basically so that you can get it through your business's accounts payable department the to get the expense. That's yeah, right. yeah. Uh, let's take another question. Can you use old uh, Surface add-ons with this? Like if you got a keyboard or a uh, pen from another one? How old? Yeah, I think going back to, I think the, f I wanna say the four, they're all, they've been the same. Um, definitely the Surface Pro, because they stopped adding a number, appending a number to mm -hmm. the end of them. There's mm -hmm. the Surface Pro now. Um, those definitely work. Uh, I'm not sure how far back it goes. It's the same magnetic latch, I think. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that they're compatible. So, okay, so let's talk about the, the LTE compatibility. Yes, so, so here's, the, what's going on here's, here? the, here's the secret SIM card slot um, right there. Mm -hmm. Same as on your phone, pop it out, put the card in, slot it back in, super mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. So that's where that lives. Um, that can that can do the major carriers. If you have Verizon SIM, T-Mobile SIM, pop that in there. So you're it's good, unlocked. You're good to go. Yeah, it's unlocked. It'll work with any carrier in the mm -hmm. U.S. So that's a nice nice little plus. That's um, a nice thing. So there is the other kind of secret thing we have to wrap our head around a bit is there is an embedded SIM, an eSIM, uh, in this in the system in, in both of the SKUs for the uh, for the LTE. So you do not need to put a SIM in it. It you, will work without a SIM. Technically speaking, you do not need to put a SIM in it. There is going to be a pay-as-you-go plan available through the Windows Store. Um, you can buy in different chunks. I have the prices in my review, but mm -hmm. you can get 30-day, 15-day, one day, and that costs you up to 29 uh, or a dollar. Don't think of them day. in terms of days. Don't think of them. In, don't think of them in terms of days. Think of them in terms of 
of data. Data. Okay. Basically, it's it's uh, fourteen dollars for a gig, mm -hmm. right? And then thirty dollars for three gigs, yeah. which is that is more than you would pay on a monthly plan. But if you're the kind of person who only needs this occasionally, it's not horrifyingly outrageous. Now I know right. some of you out there who are listening from like you know, Pakistan or Estonia or places with much lower data rates are like, $30 for three gigs, that's highway robbery. That's how much it costs in the United States. Mobile data in the United States is just it's really expensive. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Another question. To clarify something, can you make phone calls with it? No, okay, so you cannot make circuits. So this is, this is an LTE only device. It does not make Volte or circuit switched phone calls, but you can use Skype, yeah. you know, you can use, uh, you can use other... Here in 2018, there's other ways to make calls. And exactly. Video and voice calls than your, uh, than your cell phone. Right. There are, there are many ways to make a phone call over a data network, mm -hmm. and this can make those kinds of calls. So for all intents and purposes... Yeah. Yeah. Now, though, there is a good question of, uh, is there a way to access the SMS messages sent to the internal SIM card? Ooh. Is, is there an application question. on here? Not that I know of, but that, is, that would be nifty, huh? Yeah. It is yeah. a third-party solution. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can, you, can, uh, you can hook it up to a Google Voice number, and then you're getting and sending all the text through Google Voice. Mm. Or you can use, uh, if you're on T-Mobile, they have an application called T-Mobile Digits which lets you pop up a browser window on your screen through which you can manage that T-Mobile account. Mm. But I just didn't know if there was something built into... Nothing more of. I didn't see anything while I was poking around, um, nor was it made made known to me. Uh, okay. if, that's, if that's a big feature. Um, well, you know, I didn't use okay. it. Um, oh, another advantage. Another advantage of this thing mm -hmm. over a phone is if you have an old phone, if you have an old phone who, if you have an old phone whose connectivity isn't great or mm -hmm. which doesn't have, uh, you know, up to date frequency bands. Or if you're just not a big, yeah, if you're not a big cell phone user, right? If you're right. like, you know, a business professional, you don't really live right. on your cell phone, and, and then this will then this will get better speeds and coverage. Yeah, yeah, like it won't get better speeds and coverage than say a Galaxy S8. Right. But like, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, have some, you know, cheapo phone from three years ago, and they mm -hmm. don't pay that much attention to it, and this will get better s speeds and coverage than that. Right. Yeah. So. So, uh, oh, another question. Sort of bottom line, and like, who should get this one? Who should get the you know base model? Um, the base model, as in the non-LTE, yeah. or as the yeah. Um, so yeah, there's the cheaper LTE version. Again, that's just cut cost. You mm -hmm. don't think you'll need the extra RAM. You don't think you'll need the extra storage. There's the Pro without the LTE. So that was a good device on its own. We editor's choice Surface Pro. Um, again, we have the very expensive one. It was very fast, but you can it starts all the way down at I believe eight hundred dollars. So. Big range, uh, big range of prices there. Um, that's for someone who does take their laptop uh, home, takes it, travels with it, maybe types or does some emails on the, you know, does whatever on the train or, um, you know, does does word processing, not emails rather, um, and simple offline stuff. Um, but you do travel with it, you do want it to mm -hmm. be portable, you do want mm -hmm. the system to come with you. It can be both your work and home machine. Um, you can use it on the couch. You can watch movies in bed. That's uh, it's something that you know versatile. That's kind of the calling card of the service line. This one. You get all of that, but it's obviously, I mean, I would say professionally shifted because those people are the ones who need uh, the LTE on the train. It sure would be nice to have a device with LTE at any time if you're away from your office. Uh, connecting to the internet is great. Wi-Fi is not pervasive yet, unfortunately. Um, it's always convenient, but I say people who need it are more likely to be business professionals. Yeah, I would, say, I would say you get this if you're a frequent yeah. uh, business traveler who goes to a lot of places that don't have Wi-Fi and yep. you need to be connected, and that's why you get this. Yeah. Now, there aren't a lot of other LTE-enabled laptops out there, right? But there are some coming. There's some coming. When, there's going to be all these connected, always always online um, um, laptops coming from really most manufacturers at this point. Everyone's kind of jumping in. Asus, uh, Lenovo, HP. HP. Yeah, um, yeah. they're all trying, to get, all trying to get in on that. This is kind of, in a way, Microsoft's own uh, first-party answer to that. Um, but it's also, this is Intel's answer. Mm, that's the difference. Thing. The Qualcomm. You know much more about the, the, the Qualcomm Intel beef than I would well, as far it, as services is, is concerned. My question is, and what I don't know, is that all of those other LTE laptops that are coming use Qualcomm processors. Mm -hmm. And we have never really seen, wind we haven't seen Windows on a Qualcomm processor since the, since the, the, the horror which has been erased from all of our memories, which yeah. is Windows RT. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I scarcely see... AMD on yeah on yeah AMD processors. So what's on, that performance going to be like? Laptops. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We don't know. We just don't know. Let's take another question. Would you personally purchase it? Um, I so so having having my own phone, uh, an up to date modern phone, 
Um, I don't think I travel or, or go <laughs> a distance quite enough that I need something for work uh, that, that is 4G enabled. Um, if I was in need of it, I think this is arguably one of, if not the best solution for that, for, for a computer with it built in. Obviously, there's other solutions. You can get your own hotspot. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can get you know, any dongles that, that, that enable that. But um, yeah, as I'm far as a built-in built -in device with built-in service, um, if I was going to do that personally, uh, this would be my recommendation. Am I going to buy it personally? I don't, I don't think I need it. I have a short commute. I, I don't travel for work a ton. Um, you know, when I do, there are other solutions I can do in a pinch, but I'm not going to be someone who's paying for an additional data plan is basically what I'm, what I'm saying. So my day-to-day -day work machine is a Surface Book. Mm -hmm. uh, I travel a lot for work. I'm probably the, the person in PC Mag editorial who travels the most. He's never here. Um, yeah, which is, which is great for my office mate, let me tell you that. But, uh, but I would love my Surface Book to have built-in LTE. I would not step down from my gorgeous, super powerful Surface Book to this purely right. for the LTE. Right. I would love it if Microsoft did a Surface Book with, with LTE, LTE so that when I'm spending all that time on the road, I don't have to juggle that extra hotspot, which I'm always juggling. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that'd be nice, bring it to the, bring it to the higher. Yeah, it, that's again another caveat is what hardware you already have. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna really buy another machine to replace if you have a new or perfectly functional machine right. just to get the 4G? In your case, obviously not. But but yeah, and, and if you just want a hotspot, by the way, we have a very nice roundup of hotspots on our website, which hopefully Pete can find for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Okay, so Microsoft, Surface, Pro, LTE, we rated it four, four stars. stars. Excellent, um, already great hardware. Add the addition of the super useful, for some people, vital right. uh, addition of 4G LTE service, no. which is simple, functional, not really any hassle. I set it up and, and went, no complaints. No editor's choice because it's a little nishy. A little nishy, yeah. Little nishy. The, the hardware's good, the hardware earned an editor's choice. Um, this, that said, still yep. a four is a very good rating and it would be our one of, if not our best recommendation for uh, people who are looking for some 4G LTE hardware. One more question. Can you use an external GPU enclosure with it? <laughs> <laughs> it has no, um, the only one that would maybe work with it is the Razer Core because that's not proprietary and this has no USB-C with Thunderbolt 3, so no. No, <laughs> and no, you can't upgrade it in any way. <laughs> Before yes. you get there. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. The full review of this new uh, Surface Pro with LTE is up on PCMag.com, along with lots of other tablet reviews, hotspot reviews, PC reviews, reviews of all shapes, sizes, and forms. Uh, if you are on Facebook, thank you for watching. Please come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. If you are on YouTube, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and check back on our channel for our daily one cool things.